Ryan Prabhati and I have the privilege of interviewing my teacher, Dr. Yevli Kost. Thank you sir for being with us yeah, today. It's a pleasure. So, it has been a long and a prestigious journey. You have been the uh, dean of AKM Hospital and you've been the head of the department of, of medicine here at KJC. How do you look back at the journey? The journey is long, but uh, let me share with you. I entered the medical school in 1969, so almost uh, 50 years passed. At undergraduate level, the subjects were limited only anatomy and physiology. There was no biochemistry. Second MBBS, forensic medicine sometimes was difficult to understand. Pharmacology required a lot of memorizing. And pathology was uh, interesting. Again, at that time, there was no microbiology only pathology, forensic medicine and uh, pharmacology. Then again, there was no specialization like ENT or cell separate exams, only medicine, surgery and gynec. The education in general was uh, quite good. At the entrance time, there was some incidents of ragging at that time. Now we have got anti-ragging committees, but of different types, mental and sometimes the deal. But all in all, the total undergraduate experience was really enjoyable. I, for one, I had a little added pressure because I was a recipient of central government scholarship, which demanded that you should clear every year at the first attempt. So it was obligatory for me, both first, second MBBS and third MBBS, to clear at the first attempt. That was the minimum expectation. And of course, uh, after that pleasant experience of internship, Internship, as I said at that time, is like uh, you're autonomous, not too much of discipline and uh, relatively free of tension. But it was a benefit to help all the residents during internship and to get as many procedures done. Correct. Currently, maybe only blood collection is allowed, but blood collection, helping in appendixectomy, then this uh, sterilization, so some minor operations. He learned under supervision, of course, but he got the confidence. There was no question of stitch and all any problem. All types of sutures, just at the level of internship, got it completed. My choice right now, from right from then, was medicine. So medicine used to be considered as a branch of intelligent people. So if you get it, you are lucky because the number of residences are not very large. Limited admissions. So even the first three months I had to do in Ghana, waiting for uh, getting a post in medicine. But subsequently I was happy. But in the process, in three months, I also learned uh, added obstetrics and so could understand in later life the complications of pregnancy better. MD level, it was more abstract because unlike now, sonography not there, then CT scan not there, MRI not there. So most of the diagnosis used to be clinical, but at the same time, the differential diagnosis was very important. Unlike now, where more or less within a two days, you are able to come to a precise diagnosis. Within that, again, the central nervous system was a challenge. You used to write sometimes query demyelinating and query, but it was not fixed and sure. Treatment-wise, at the time, very limited because in cardiology, there was no angiography, angioplasty and all that. So treatment was limited only to treating heart blocks by using alupent. And also tachyarrhythmia, the only drug was xylocaine. So there, but still, the type of care we gave in intensive care unit, except for those with uh, cardiogenic shock or other patients, we could use to treat them properly. Cardiac failure we used to treat. Arrhythmias within that limited armamentarium successfully treated. So there was a pleasure in working in intensive coronary care unit. At the time, ICU, medical ICU was just in the process of developing and the procedure of tracheostomy ventilation was just being. The biggest uh, success at that time was passing the MD medicine and therapeutics at first attempt. So the exam used to go on for three days. First of all, there was the central nervous system case. If you are successful on first day, you can venture to enter on second day. Otherwise, candidates used to say that for second day, you go for learning how to face at the subsequent attempt. Because on the first day, you know that CNS, what has happened to you. And last day, of course, was uh, Viva. All our rooms were full of books. 
in bed in the morning i pray to god that let me not don't allow me to appear for this exam for a second time <laughs> as uh, both luck blessings our training could have it i could clear at the first attempt so i joined the government of gujarat at the mp shah medical college in irvin hospital because this was the place where the first post was available after uh, two years i looked at the way to enter mumbai and there was an advertisement of maharashtra public service commission for the post of associate professor in uh, principal medical colleges under the mumbai municipal corporation so i got selected as a reader what is today associate professor of medicine so i joined the lokmanya tilak municipal medical college and general hospital in 1982 at that time of course i never dreamed that uh, i one day i would become the dean of that hospital because at that time we did not have long aims we had just short aims so 1982 to 88 i was the associate professor then i was uh, promoted I joined KM Hospital in '88, up to where I was professor of medicine from '88 to '97. '97, in order to become head of department, I came back to science in 1998. And in uh, the year 2000, I had, after I had completed 20 years of service, I applied for the post of dean. So I got selected for the post of dean in 2001. I worked as dean at Science Hospital. Just a few things about Science Hospital. At that time, 1,425 beds, staff was around 2,900 plus, and Sain Hospital being uh, at the junction of the entrance to the city, all trauma accidents, etc. I could uh, I was in charge of ICUs. So, two three main things was 2005 Mithi floods, and following that leptospirosis and all those. So, disease control for all the eastern suburbs was given to Sain Hospital. Then in 2001, there was a World Trade Center tragedy. So at that time, again, Sain Hospital acted as a nodal center. For the first time in our DMP, that is Disaster Management Plan, it was expanded. And we introduced the concept that nuclear and biological is also a part of Disaster Management Plan. Nodal activity taken place at Sain Hospital for all the hospitals in Mumbai. So NBC is a part of DM, DMP. And the last pleasant experience of Sain was uh, 2007. It celebrated 60th year so under my sort of leadership, chairmanship. It was a big occasion where His Excellency the Governor, Sri Krishna, had come as a chief guest. But just before that, uh, 2003, multiple train bomb blasts. So at that time, a lot of casualties at that time in our local press we were mentioned as people who kept the city running under hostile circumstances. At that time, Honorable Prime Minister Manmohan Singh also had come to see the patient. And also the then Chief Minister of Gujarat, the Narendra Modi, had also come to visit the patient. So on both these occasions, at least the services rendered by the Siam Hospital and the entire team was uh, appreciated. It was also one good feeling. Subsequently, I joined the KM Hospital as the Dean. So again, it was a prestigious moment in my life that I became the Dean of the St. Yes Medical College, King Edward Memorial Hospital. And in a short span, I was promoted also as Director of Medical Education and Health. Subsequently, I realized that a lot of research is happening in all four medical colleges. But unlike the government of Maharashtra, there is no post designated with research. So I requested the corporation and they converted into Director of Medical Education and Research. At that time, again, malaria, dengue, monsoon season, was a big challenge. Then the second, as a director, I used to polio boots in the city of Mumbai. Just see in the morning whether things have started. And number two, ensure that up to 5 p.m. the activities are continued as stated and declared. So these are some uh, few important things as far as the corporation is concerned. On uh, superannuation from Mumbai Corporation, I joined the government of India as the director. Then that I had the full team, that is for academic purpose, the team, for hospital purpose, medical superintendent, then one financial advisor, one legal officer, and one deputy director. So the job remained largely administrative. In 2011, I got a call from Somaya, 
hospital. At that time, our team was uh, Madam Niyogi, and uh, she just conveyed a message to our gynecologist. Said, oh, can you join? And that is how I joined Somaya in 2012. About the last uh, seven years, I must say, it is an enjoyable experience. It's a very different atmosphere. We are a compact hospital. Though at the beginning, the admissions were 50. Now we are planning for 100 admissions as a sort of decided by our chairman and management. And I look forward that in 2021, 22, our seat capacity is expanded from 50 to 100. And whenever the capacity is expanded, the medical council expects more things. So it is a case of expansion of the hospital, expansion of the services. As far as students are concerned, in the first MBBS, the students of Sumeya, I think, work very hard. Every time we get a report, so many have won gold medals in anatomy, physiology, etc. But uh, afterwards, little they may become a little slack. But I think exam again ensures that they will start working hard. Akarshan at Sumeya Hospital has been a big feature. And I must really appreciate the talent of our students in uh, every year Akarshan. Some new thing is uh, coming up. Skills for uh, hospital administration uh, include being familiar with everybody. For example, uh, we there are always some grades that is uh, class one, uh, class two, and the uh, rest of the staff. So in administration, sometimes you may get problems. For example, there may be nursing unions, the worker and their union. So their demands also have to be sort of um, met or tactfully managed. So many times they may come to you with morcha, protest, and all that. So you have to be skilled to keep your head cool, take a rational decision, and at the same time, sort of mitigate the issues and dispel the problems. Sometimes you have to postpone them. Not all problems can have quick solutions. So there are definite challenges. Then even uh, as far as the teachers of a medical college are concerned, they are always uh, looking for promotions and all. So that is the issue. So within rules, we have to ensure that MCI requirements, MHS requirements are met. And a fine difference is their eligibility, number one. Then a clear vacancy, number two. And last is, of course, uh, suitability of the candidate. All these have to be taken into account as uh, regards to. On the side of uh, management, uh, you will have to be cost conscious. You can't be demanding anything that you want just because it is advanced in medicine. But you have to ensure that whatever equipment you call is utilized adequately. And even the returns are fair at first even and then fair. So for every equipment, particularly expensive one you get, you need to be accountable. So utility of the vehicle is important. In public hospitals, it is overused, so wear and tear is more. But in other hospitals, wherever it is procured, it has to be maintained well. The biggest challenge in all hospitals, because we belong to emergency services, at any point in time, all our services are functioning. 24 hours into 7 into 365. Non-stop services, because they are vital and emergency. So that is the biggest challenge. So any breakdown anywhere has to be promptly managed. And last is you have to be people friendly. People friendly. That's very important because our patients may be educated, less educated. That But medical science is advancing so fast that there can be misconception in their mind. So reserving some time for uh, talking to the patient and relatives. Even in our Somaya IC, you must have seen me outside. That after we finish the ICU round, we take out time to talk to the relatives. It is very vital. It is not just uh, Mumbai, all over India, because the setups can be different. The violence has appeared to be uh, quite on the rise. And that includes also assaults on the hospital staff, sometimes nursing staff, etc., and including the doctors. So, one of the keys is that we cannot totally avoid. No hospital can say that there will be nothing of that sort of year because death is a feature of the hospital. Whenever, despite the best efforts, you cannot salvage the life of the patient, some amount of anger could be there, but to pacify them is also important. So, good communication is very, very vital at all levels be it the intern, be it the resident doctor, be it the faculty specialist. 
everyone has to ensure that communication and just saying that I have talked to the patient is perhaps not enough. Not enough. Because we have to talk to the patient, at the end of it, we have to find that whether he is reasonably satisfied. So that is called as you have talked, whether communication has been effective. So effective communication and to the point that the relative is convinced of what the doctor is talking is very vital. If that happens, the incidence can also be less. And of course, with modern medicine, now what is happening is that uh, we are investigation oriented. Sometimes our resident may say, this is medicine, that is. Let us see on the report. But ideally, you should be in a position to judge the patient and tell them what you are you doing. Rather than uh, when MRI comes, I will tell. Or when the CT scan report comes, I will tell. So that is probably not a very good way of saying. Saying is, this is what the situation is. I'm treat, suspecting and even started treatment for hemiplegia. But CT will confirm on the time. That's the better way of thinking, which of course comes over years. We don't expect any first year resident to immediately. So the art of history taking in medical education is vital. Over a period of time, it will instill the confidence in the doctor. Uh, what are the differences that you see in a private practice? and working in a hospital and what do you personally do towards academic Actually, the thing is like this, in some clinicians uh, may opt for exclusive hospital practice. We are happy with the hospital, we don't want the... But by and large, most of them, majority of them, would always dream of uh, doing a practice. Now again, it is whether it is a solo practice, that you are taking the entire responsibility on yourself. So solo practice in consulting room, is mostly the preferred pattern. Do the consultation, advise the patient. And if some of them require admission, you can admit them to whichever hospital you are attached. Very rarely there is polyclinic also, and group practice. So these are different types depending on the personality. Now sometimes some students of the same batch who have gone into different specialties, they form a group more easily. So they know each other right from their student name. So that group practice also is there. So and they may not, and of course in medical profession, seniority matters. So senior physician may charge more, relatively junior person, the charges might be less. Now of course, people are having more faith in any person with qualification. So right now, of course, our fragmentation of medicine. Because everyone is an organ specialist, heart specialist, kidney specialist, brain specialist, neurologist, endocrinologist, hematologist immunologist. So there is no end to specialization. But at the end of it, I think uh, internal medicine, that is medicine matters because we coordinate so many final treatment. Any piecemeal treatment given at one place can be modified in the interest of the patient. Nephrologist may give elastic high dose. It comes with hypokalemia, muscle weakness. Again, he may go to endocrine, who may ask for something. But the role of physician uh, is very important. MD, internal medicine, physician, at our time, it was uh, general medicine and therapeutics. Now it is only called as general medicine. In US, they use the word internal medicine. So broadly, the role of general medicine is important in any setup, be it a hospital or be it a medical college. And specialties are bound to grow further and further. Because that is like, unless you are a super specialist, you may not survive. You have to develop some extraordinary skills, like gastroenterology. You must be good at OJD scopy, colonoscopy, uh, this, uh, other people must be good at uh, dialysis, managing dialysis and a renal transplant program. Neurologists also have to make diagnosis based on multiple investigations. Sometimes now in the field of stroke, acute thrombolysis can be undertaken. Cardiology has advanced beyond limits. Hypertension, I can tell you that uh, previously complications were quite early. Now we are getting patients treating uh, receiving treatment for hypertension for more than three, four decades, and they have skipped some complications, acute catastrophic complications. Same is true with diabetes, a very high trend of diabetes. But some of the diabetics, if they follow the lifestyle and the medications advice, they will live longer, 30, 40 years. In general, India's longevity has also increased. Right now, it is 68.8. So, thanks to many of the things number one, control of vaccination program, tropical disease. So all the 
that is number one, better nutrition, better advice. And now non-communicable is also dominating. But this is in general the pattern that we have not yet come out of total control of infectious disease, but at the same time we are facing lifestyle diseases in a big way. What is the difference you've seen in the management and approach towards hypertension? Well, let me share with you. Somewhere in uh, late 70s, only one drug was available and that was called as a hydrochlorothiazide. At that time the name was acid drugs. Then so many other drugs came. In the 80s we had calcium channel blocking agents. Thereafter we got ACE inhibitors and ARVs. And this is how we are now having a wider range of drugs to be used effectively according to the profile of the patient. Or rather we are treating the underlying mechanism. A young patient comes with hyperdynamic pulse, stressed out person, tense all the time. Beta blockers we use. Patients who come with some swelling, dyspnea, when we use diuretics. Some renal issues are there, when we use the RP renoprotective agents. So, in short, compared to for the last 30 40 years of hypertension that I have seen, we have better drugs, we have got larger number of drugs, and we are using drug combinations effectively. Second important thing is uh, we are able to diagnose more secondary hypertension. Because secondary hypertension may have a cure, whereas 90 to 95 percent essential idiopathic hypertension may mean that it is a lifetime treatment for a patient of high blood pressure. But one thing I can say that in patients who are compliant, because you know the standard five things we always talk about, for us it is suspicion, detection, and diagnosis. But once you advise treatment, the compliance in the hand of the patient. The patient comply properly, can survive for a longer time, and many complications can be postponed. So hypertension, yes, better treatable and uh, better manageable as compared to past. And uh, the last thing is hypertension with coronary artery disease, because we are able to suspect coronary artery disease early, so things have become much better. Um, and what are the future changes that you see? Future changes only in relation to NCD, I can tell you two things. Number one, in hypertensive patients, what happens if people have received long term treatment, they are getting uh, patients with lacunar infarcts, lacunar infarcts, then periventricular changes. So what does this mean? That hypertension has been controlled, but it has not stopped affecting the blood vessels. So some of the people may develop what is called as dementia. So dementia is a late complication of people who have been successfully treated with hypertension. Second complication, of course, is cardiac failure, long-standing hypertension. So these are the two main things. The same thing applies even to coronary artery disease. Because previously limited drugs, but now we can take arrhythmias, we can implantable devices are also available. At the end of the whole story, we have taken care of the coronary circulation. But we may not be in a position to take care of the myocardium. Two fold challenges right now appear to be congestive heart failure, in which there are some recent breakthroughs in the form of SGLT2 inhibitors. And dementia, Alzheimer's uh, is being sort of investigated a lot, so many trials are there. But something precise has yet to emerge. So we are treating only with drugs like citicoline, paracetam, etc. But that is a treatment uh, without much conviction. Nowadays, there is an increasing number of patients who already Google their symptoms and uh, approach the doctor. So, how do you deal uh, with those patients? What would you advise the patient? Yeah, there are, so, Google, uh, up to a point, yeah, it can make your patient uh, knowledgeable. But at the same time, it can confuse. So, nothing wrong in referring to Google because it is available. And human curiosity will always ensure that whatever problems you have, Google is your best guide at the moment. I don't know about the future. So Google patients sometimes, they may ask you queries sometimes which might appear very, you know, not to use the very, very sort of nonsensical. You'll have to be patient for the first time and tell them you follow this, you follow this advice, you take this. In addition, anytime you can contact. Now newer devices are available. Some queries also patient can answer if you are not able to answer on phone. So better ways of uh, interacting with patients, both in diabetes and hypertension. 
The second is uh, patients who come with uh, treatment received of other pathies. Some of them, because the government of India, CSI laboratory, they have devised some drugs for medicine, uh, diabetes. So patients first take our advice, but then they bring out the drugs. Sir, I am taking this tablet also. It could be for blood pressure, it could be for aging, it could be for hormonal changes, or it could be for the precise condition. So we have to be very tactful that how come we are able to. Ideally, if you look at it, person should take only drug of modern medicine because we may not know much about the probable interaction. The lifestyle effect of both is very important. So particularly 6S that I always talk about. Curtail yourself in 3S, that is sugar, salt and saturated fat. And the other three we promote, sports, exercise. Second is stress, last is the yoga. So three things can be curtailed, but these are all lifestyle diseases. That every medical graduate should be aware of other pathways which exist. So nowadays, if in some conditions, you may not get the final remedy. Say for example, degenerative condition. Except for a joint replacement, some people may refuse that. So alternative treatment is available. Like that, so other pathways may exist. It is not necessary to believe that everything else is absurd and we need not uh, sort of have any contempt for other pathies. In fact, right now, under the support of the government of India, Ayush is uh, growing very fast. So, some final distinction I made at a recent meeting, interdisciplinary meeting was there. So, I said health preservation, health restoration and disease prevention, the Ayurvedic and the yoga can work. Whereas when it is trauma, sexist, infection, TB, modern medicine is a must. So over the years, uh, we've seen that uh, there is an increasing mistrust that is developing uh, in patients towards doctors. And that is leading to violence and uh, various medical, uh, medical legal litigation. What contributes towards this? Uh, change in attitude and uh, how can we as doctors prevent this? You have to be down to the earth. You have to deal with every patient uh, depending on his background. For example, he will not understand fully the language he speaks. So language is important. In fact, uh, local language being known in this new course, I said it we should be fairly conversant with uh, any language. At least in Mumbai, we need to know English, Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati. These are the four sort of, any person comes, we have to be sort of first understanding and then uh, try to explain in a manner they understand. Sometimes very odd or almost very different type of beliefs exist. So we'll have to descend down to that level. We just talk uh, at a high level. They are not able to understand a word. Then it becomes a problem. So as I said, good communication, effective communication, understanding the patient. Now there are some patients who have got economic problems also. So helping them with the uh, Mahatma Jyoti, Jyoti Wafale, Yojana, which is operating in Samaya Hospital. We are helping some patients with those problems. Then our uh, medical social welfare department is there. They are also helping some patients. So guiding the and helping the patient, not within the confines of treatment, but in addition other help that they require. So the correct word for that is counseling. Counseling is vital and communication uh, is also important. Thank you so much for such a Yeah, thank you very much.